All right, guys, our objectives for this lesson. I will revise the draft for order, organization, and sentences that make sense. I will edit the draft for punctuation, word usage, and spelling. Okay, revise is that arms one. Edit is the cups one. Revise is all about the story itself making sense in the right order and the words and the sentences making order, making sense in the right order. Editing is more about the tiny details, punctuation, how you use one word, spelling the correct word. This is the bigger picture, the whole story. This is the littler picture. You're looking at each sentence individually. So right over here, I've pulled up revise versus edit so that we can remember what we're doing. Remember, A is add, remove, move, or substitute. Edit is cups. Capitalize, use the correct words, punctuate, and spelling. Now over here I have an old star pulled up. This is exactly what something that you might have to revise and edit will look like. We're looking at the passage making pancakes. What we're going to do is see how I want these marked up for the first three and then you're going to do the second set of three questions on your own. I want them marked up the exact same way we do it here. So go ahead and follow along with me while we're marking this up. Let's start with our first question, which is going to be number six. What change, if any, should be made in sentence six? If you're looking for one change in a sentence, it's going to be editing. So I'm going to put an E over here, if I can draw it. The letter E for editing. And we're going to go up to six before we even read our answer choices. On sentence six. Okay, here it is. Since we know it's going to be an editing problem because we're looking at just one sentence, we're going to put cups over here. Now you're going to write this, I'm going to type it. Cups. I'm going to move it over to the side. We're going to go through each letter over here and see if we can figure out the problem before we even look at the answer choices. So first start with capitalization. We capitalize the beginning of quotes and the beginning of sentences. Let's see, what do I do first? I asked eagerly. We've got the W capitalized here. We've got our letter I's capitalized. We've got the next set capitalized. Remember, we always capitalize the next word after the comma in a quotation. I don't see any names or proper nouns that need to be capitalized, so we're good on cups on C. I'm gonna cross that out. Next is U. U means usage. Are we? Do we have any words that we could use incorrectly that we need to double check? Now, I don't see any words like two, two, and two, or there, there, and there. Um, I don't see any like tricky words or anything that doesn't make sense. What do I do first? I asked eagerly. So I'm going to cross that one out for now. P is punctuation. We've got periods, commas, question marks, exclamation points, and quotes. Let's check our quotes. We've got one, we've got two. It's not our quotes. Here we have a comma. Now this would not be bad except that what are they doing? Asking a question. How do we end questions? With a question mark. So instead of that comma, we should have a question mark. Our issue is with P. Let's double check our spelling. What do I do first? Those all look correct. I asked or spelled correctly, eagerly. This might be one that we would look up in a dictionary if we weren't positive, but I know that this one's spelled correctly. So I'm gonna cross S out and we're gonna see if we can find something about a question mark in one of our answers down here. Letter F, change the comma to a question mark. That is exactly what we said. Um, let's go through these and mark these out though. Delete the quotation marks after the comma. No, because she's still talking. We wouldn't want to do that. Change eagerly to eager. Let's see. What do I do first? I asked eager. No, that doesn't make sense. Eagerly sounds much better. 
J, make no change. We're not going to pick that if we have a better choice available. Our answer is going to be F. And what we did for that was punctuation. So I'm going to label it a letter P. Let's go to number seven. What change should be made in sentence 13? So are we revising or editing here? We are editing because we're looking for one change in one sentence. Usually that's going to be editing. From the looks of this, it looks like it'll either be a comma or maybe some spelling. So let's go find sentence 13 and code that. All right, here's 13. We need to code this and we're going to code it with cups because it's an editing problem. Make sure that you don't leave any lumps, Dad instructed while I stirred the mixture. All right, let's start with C. We know to capitalize our beginnings of quotes and sentences, so those are both capitalized. We know we need to capitalize our letter I's when they're a word. And there's no other names or proper nouns, so we can cross out, no, that was not good. We can cross out the C, U, making sure we use the words correctly. Make sure that you don't, do not, remember this becomes do not, and that makes sense. Make sure that you do not leave any lumps, Dad instructed while I stirred the mixture. I don't see anything else that could be one of those tricky words. We're going to cross that one out. P is punctuation. Make sure you don't leave any lumps. We have our quote here, our quote here. We've got a comma, which will work because this is not a question. We have an apostrophe here, but it works because it means do not. And we end with a period. We know it's not P. Cross out the P. That leaves us with spelling. Let's go see what words they were wanting us to look out for. We already said it's not going to be punctuation, and this is about commas. Cross that out. Change instructed to instructing. So we need to look at instructed, and we need to look at stirred. Change instructed to instructing. Make sure that you don't leave any lumps, Dad, instructing while I stirred the mixture. No, that doesn't make any sense. We're going to cross B out. Now we're left with change stirred to stirred or no change needed. Now the best thing that we can do when we're stuck on a word is use our resources for spelling. So I'm going to grab a dictionary and unfortunately you can't use it online but you'll definitely have one available to you. And let's look up. So let's go to Merriam-Webster, the dictionary site. And we're going to look up both of those spellings and see which one of those is correct. So let's start with the one they gave us, stirred with one R. Stired. It says the word you suggested isn't in the dictionary. Let's check stirred with two R's. To cause movement to disturb the quiet of. So this would be our correct answer. They're trying to move the mixture, right? We know it's going to be a spelling issue. And we know that our answer is going to be C. All right, this is the last one I'm working with you. What is the correct way to write sentence 20? Now, they're not asking for one change. They're asking how to write a whole sentence. So, is this going to be revising or editing? If you said revising, you would be correct. We are revising because it's asking how to write a whole sentence, not just make one little change. So let's read this. We're going to make sure we pause at commas and we're going to whisper read it out loud to ourselves. So
also F. Otherwise, the pancakes would stick to the surface and have a big mess to clean up. Now what I want you to do is cover up each sentence with your finger and see if they make sense by themselves. So let's cover up the first one first. And have a big mess to clean up. Would that make sense all by itself? No, not really, because you don't know what's going on. It's not going to be F if part of it doesn't make sense by itself. G. Otherwise, the pancakes would stick to the surface, then we would have to clean up, then we would have a big mess to clean up. I feel like we need another pause in here, but it's not terrible. Let's try it again. Otherwise, the pancakes would stick to the surface, then we would have a big mess to clean up. Let's see if we like H better. Otherwise, the pancakes would stick to the surface, and we would have a big mess to clean up. That's not bad. J is that it's written correctly in the paper. So let's go look at sentence 20 in the paper. 20. Otherwise, the pancakes would stick to the surface. We would have a big mess to clean up then. Now we know this isn't going to be correct because we don't have a conjunction right here to make us a, com a compound sentence. We just have two run-on sentences. So we know it's not going to be J either. If we're picking between these two, we need to figure out which one sounds better and which one makes sense. We know then is a transition word and there's no comma near it. That makes me a little worried. But on the other hand, this one, otherwise the pancakes would stick to the surface, comma, and we would have a big mess to clean up. That's the correct way to write a compound sentence. And these test writers love compound sentences. I'm going to go with H. We're not going to go with G because that sentence sounds awkward and it runs too long. Now you're going to work through 9, 10, and 11 and figure out what your answers would be by marking them up with either arms or cups. <laughs> Up here you could even do, like we did with our cups, which I forgot, is type or write arms and figure out what issue you had. Did we have an issue adding words, removing words, moving the sentences around, or substituting the words for other sentences? These all seem like the same words, we just kind of moved them around a little bit. So I would say we had a move issue. Doesn't want to circle move. We'll make a triangle. So you do send will not accept it and actually do 12 too. And I will not accept it unless it has um, them coded with cups and or arms and you show me your proof by plugging in your answers like I did up here and crossed out my letters like I did with cups. You can turn these into me or bring them to me to check your corrections. I'm excited to see your work.